If there is one commodity that has disappointed investors more than any other these past five years, it's almost certainly been platinum. Most others have had their moment in the sun, even if brief, but platinum has been wretched. But its day will come. The question is, when? We tend to think of platinum as being more expensive than gold. That's why platinum credit cards are higher status than gold credit cards. And why in the world of album certification, platinum, one million units, ranks higher than gold, half a million units. Historically, platinum has been the more expensive, which makes sense as it is rarer. Typically, the platinum price will be one and a quarter times that of gold. And with gold sitting at around $1,800 an ounce, therefore, you would expect platinum, the platinum price, to be trading around $2,250 an ounce. It isn't, though. It isn't even trading at half that. It isn't even trading at $1,000 an ounce. It's at $950. On its current trajectory, platinum is going to be half the gold price at some point over the next fortnight. A mere 15 years ago, it was double the gold price. Why the disappointing performance? There are three reasons, as far as I can tell. The three main sources of platinum demand around the world are as follows. First, cars. Platinum is used in catalytic converters to oxidize carbon monoxide in diesel engines. Second, investment. People buy platinum for the same reasons they do gold and silver. And third, jewelry. But since the Volkswagen diesel scandal of late 2015, when it emerged that diesel engines weren't quite as clean as they were made out to be, demand for diesel cars has plummeted. Unfavorable taxation and regulation has only amplified this. Meanwhile, many of the investors who in the 2000s and the noughties might have bought platinum now buy Bitcoin and crypto. The speculative anti-inflation trade has moved over to crypto. And thirdly, as far as jewellery is concerned, platinum is not as fashionable as it was 10 years ago, probably because it's worth less, ironically, and jewellery is a status symbol. The supply of platinum is hugely centralised. Over 70% of annual uh, global supply comes from one region of South Africa, the Bushveld. With one central point of failure, the market is extremely vulnerable. Should something significant go wrong there, strikes, power supply failures, some kind of natural disaster, political disruption, the platinum market has big problems. And platinum owners will make out like bandits. But for now, things are tickety-boo. As the World Platinum Investment Council says this week, in its quarterly report, or rather last week, platinum mine supply continues to recover gradually from the COVID-19 related operational disruptions and is up 13% on this quarter year on year. Recycling is another major source of supply and that has declined by 9%, but even so, total supply is up by more than 7% this quarter. And for 2021, total mine supply is expected to be up 25% on last year. Meanwhile, because of the semiconductor chip shortage, car manufacturing hasn't grown by as much as originally forecast. It's only up about 3% on 2020, and this too has hit platinum demand. However, tightening emissions legislation means that platinum loadings in auto catalysts are increasing, and with the high price of palladium, some substitution has started to occur with platinum instead of palladium being used in other types of engine. Vehicle demand is set to increase next year, which should be good for platinum, though the palladium price has fallen off a cliff, so we're likely to see less substitution. As for investment demand, um, demand for bars and coins is on the rise, but flows into ETFs uh, are down and many are rolling out of ETFs into dividend paying miners uh, and many are moving into the considerably more racy crypto markets. Coin and bar demand should remain constant, however. As for jewellery, the Chinese currently prefer gold and they're the big buyers. It's fashion, so it can and will change, but that is the current trend. 
For years, platinum was in deficit. Annual demand was greater than supply and that pushed up prices. Now there's a surplus and so it's hard to get very excited about this market, but it won't last forever. The light at the end of the tunnel for platinum investors is green hydrogen. It would seem to be the best route to decarbonisation. Platinum is used in water electrolyzers to produce green hydrogen and also in hydrogen fuel cells, which can power fuel cell electric vehicles. Platinum is key to unlocking hydrogen and thus will be key to meeting global net zero targets. But this is well known, however, and currently the market is going, Ugh. now that could mean green hydrogen is too many years away for the market to care, or that the market doesn't believe the politicians on net zero, or quite simply that the market has got it wrong, or a bit of all three. But all in all, it looks for now like platinum's doldrums will continue until they don't. And then it will all look very obvious that everyone should have some platinum in their portfolio, rather as we discovered with uranium earlier this year. Buy when the market is boring and nobody cares. That's often a good time to buy. Then wait, then gloat. Over the past year, platinum has ranged between about 850 and $1,350. We're currently at about 950 and in a down, downtrend. If you can pick it up below $900, I can't see how this goes wrong as a long-term investment. But as I say, you may have to wait a while. I recommended platinum as a trade of the lustrum, which is a five-year period a few years back, and the story is taking longer than expected to play out. What was a lustrum may turn out to be a decade, which is very annoying. But a return to normal historical ratios between platinum and other metals could see it easily double. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll be back with another video very soon. In the meantime, cheerio.